or tape, CDs, DVDs to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thursday evening, September the 2nd, 1982. Labor Day weekend teaching and deliverance seminar. Chuck Flynn is the teacher of the evening. This is the first service of the seminar. So let my life now be always felt that there was something we were born for and was to praise you and glorify your name. For ye the shepherd shall lead his own, for ye shall know my voice, and the Lord thy God, yea, is tempering thee, for I am bringing you unto myself. There'll be no ventriloquists, there'll be none that will try to persuade you that they are my voice because I'm purifying mine own and I'm bringing forth the pure voice of the shepherd. Do not fear, for the anointing of the Lord is upon thee. Yea, my presence shall be mighty in the land and my word shall be pure for your thinking shall come forth and the wisdom of the Lord shall be upon you. For my own shall hear my voice, for I am speaking, and by my spirit the name of the Lord, yea, is a high tower. So be of good cheer, and lift your hearts, for the Lord is speaking, and ye shall hear his voice. For my sheep will hear and be glad, for I am gathering you unto my voice. For the voice of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt surely praise me. For the voice out of the wilderness is coming forth, and the manna, yea, shall be at every table, and my people shall rejoice together. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Do it, Father. Amen. We're sitting at the table of the Lord. Amen. In Hebrews, the 8th chapter, and verse 1, please. This is the jurisdiction of the Word. I would like to say, I don't know exactly how to spell it, but the titles that we would like to bring forth under this series will be The Crescendo of God, The Crescendo, The Gathering Together, The Bringing Forth of a Great Wave. Many waves that the Lord is preparing us for in this hour. We will consider the crescendos of His harmony, of His person, of His office, and that which the Word of the Lord reaches heights of glory. Genesis 3.15 is one of those crescendos, the seed of the woman. Genesis 6. The grace of the Lord given in an immoral day, God's provision in the flood. Genesis 49, the prophecies of Jacob that were for the last days. Many of us don't realize that when Jacob prophesied over his sons, it was for our day. The epitome of glory, hallelujah, is that which God is culminating will also be in other areas of the Word, especially Daniel chapter 7, another great crescendo. But I would like to begin with Jesus, seemingly the one that reaches a little higher here in Hebrews 8, verse 1. Now the things which we have spoken, 
This is the summary. Please underline. This is the sum. This is the summary. We have such an high priest. Say it with me. We have such an high priest. Say it again. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. A minister, please circle that, a minister of the sanctuary of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, circle the word pitched, Put the army of the Lord. There's a military intent here. And throughout the word, whenever tents were pitched, there was warfare and military strength under the name of the Lord, which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest, this is the sum of all warfare, for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts, circle the word gifts, and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Amen. Let us speak life unto the Word. In my devotions, the Lord has taught us to say unto the Word, just live. Because as you and I mature, the Word matures. Or maybe it's the other way around. When we grow in grace and the knowledge of Him, there's fresh insights that we've never seen. So the simplicity of the Word is marvelous. Revelation knowledge is at hand. The Holy Ghost is speaking. Hallelujah. And therefore our ears shall hear. Hallelujah. Praise God. But, Father, we say unto the Word, Live in the name of Jesus in my brother. Live in my sister. We drive out every nonchalant type of worldly atmosphere. The debris of life. We drive out every spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus. And we praise you for the revelation of the Word shall take a hold. And we say unto the Word, live and bring forth maturity in the child of God. We thank you for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, of the things which we have spoken, this is the summary. The Bible says to clap your hands, O ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Now, we're more than triumphant. In Christ, Second Corinthians 4, Paul goes into the Roman tradition, actually, though it has a spiritual impact. When a conqueror comes forth from conquering, he was put in the chariot of a conqueror. And all of the hoorahs and the praise and all types of honor were given, but his worst enemy was tied to the chariot in back of him. And this is why Paul says, you and I are triumphant. Even though the accuser of the brethren would try to bring out the faults of he who is the conqueror, we have the authority and the triumphant anointing of Jesus within us. Praise God, and we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Now, for this seminar this weekend, we're going to speak everything that the Spirit of the Lord places upon our lips, and we're going to clap, and we're going to clap unto the Lord with the kingly anointing. And the triumphant shout of the people shall tear down every stronghold. And you're going to speak it as though it's already done, shouting it to the Father, I have provision. 
I have deliverance. I have the anointing. My loved one is set free. The anointing of the Lord has already met the need. Hallelujah. For you're triumphant now in the authority of the Word. And so praise God. This is why the Lord is going to set the pace of what you confess. He's the high priest of that which you're confessing, confessing in Him. The word profession is Hebrews 3.1. He's the high priest of that which we relate to him. We set the pace. Heaven loses. Heaven, I mean, after earth loses, we bind on earth, and heaven receives that which we declare. Hallelujah. Therefore, we set the pace. When we're clapping, clapping is found in Psalm 6 in the subtitle, To the Chief musician upon Nagenath. Nagenath means the smitings. To the chief musician means more than a musical connotation. It means to the champion of harmony with God's creative intent. What God originally created all things for, to praise, for His glory, for his comfort, and for that which brings forth the honor of God, you and I come in to that authority. To the chief musician means we will come into harmony with what God has spoken, and his creative ability shall go forth from every one of our lips. Hallelujah. Nagineth means the smitings. Where Satan has been smitten, the Messiah was to be smitten on the cross, therefore smiting the devil and stripping him of all of his power. So when you and I bring our hands together, this is our identity. We exchange our identity with him. When we clap, we bring our identity under the friction of the cross. And therefore, we recognize that through Calvary, every demonic power is smitten and destroyed. And when we're clapping now, everything that's upon our heart, all demonic power leaves. And the anointing of the Lord then gives grace and glory and divine utterance through the Word. We walk in it. In other words, this starts the process of authority in what God is doing in our lives. That's why we clap. That's why you feel such a surge of victory. That when you're clapping, number one, all satanic power is bound. Number two, clapping beckons the angels of God to work with us in every facet of our life. In everything that we have to do with the sphere of reference in our lives is set free. The poetic joy of the Lord, God begins to write on your heart the poetry of Zion. Number three, the anointing of the Lord comes upon you. As you're clapping, it says, upon Shemina. This is Psalm 6. When the Bible says, the chief musician of Nagineth on Shemineth in the eighth octave. What it means is, let this be your attitude when you're reading the Word. To the chief musician. It means this is the attitude I want you to have, that all your enemies are smitten by Calvary. Hallelujah. Nagineth, for the Messiah Jesus has been smitten. Therefore, praise God, all satanic powers bound. The angel of the Lord is beckoned, and they will come. The anointing of the Lord is with you. The chariots of fire are around this camp and around every dwelling. Hallelujah. The anointing of the Lord will touch you in your business. When you're here worshiping and appearing before the Lord, no man from Exodus 34, 24, no man's going to steal from you or rob you or cause any molesting anywhere that you have to do with. Amen? Any problem, any area of your life is already taken care of by the Spirit. 
Praise God. Because you beckon the angels of God to come and minister to you. Hallelujah. And to what is yours. And so the anointing then breaks the yoke. In the eighth octave then, Shemineth means the men of eight. Number eight stands for Messiah in the Old Testament, Christ in the New Testament, which means the anointed one. Number eight is Jesus' number. Hallelujah. And then it says in the eighth octave, which means the anointing cuts us free. On the eighth day, circumcision is applied so that all excess is cut free from you. That means former teaching that would try to bind you from having a release in your life this weekend is cut from you. And when you clap and you begin to shout with a voice of triumph, you have set the pace for God's deliverance. Shall we stand and begin to rejoice and to shout what God has already done? Jesus, hallelujah. Let's praise Him. We're free in the name of Jesus. Your home is free. Your business is free. Hallelujah. I'm free. My loved ones are free. The glory of God is provided. The anointing breaks the yoke. The word of the Lord is revealed. Everyone is delivered by the hand of the Lord. The vision is made in the name of Jesus. The demonic spirits are bound. The glory of the Lord is around about us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. The voice of triumph is upon us. Glory to God, we're healed. Set free. The anointing of the Lord is revealing His Word. We will walk in power and provision. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's done in Jesus' name. And every area of our life is under the keeping of the Lord, and we're set free. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. Now, that voice of triumph shall get stronger every day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> now, the things <clears throat> Spirit of the Lord is saying, the things. Two men, <clears throat> after the Passion Week, were going to Emmaus. Jesus draws himself near. He said, what are you discussing? They said, well, are you a stranger in Jerusalem? Don't you know that Jesus of Nazareth has been crucified and all the things that have happened to him? And Jesus said, what things? I like that. What things? They didn't recognize the Lord till he broke the bread after they beckoned and they wanted him to stay with them. The Lord wants to know what our desire is. This atmosphere of worship is very unique. Our brother, we thank God for that ministry of a minstrel to the body. We all recognize the uniqueness of the minstrel anointing. And that's where God's raising it up, is that we may desire and enter in to His presence. That we would have time, instead of progressing with certain institutions of program, Lord, we love you, we want you, we need you. That's what he wants. He wants us to beckon him closer to us. But he drew nigh and he said, what things? He had the keys of death and of hell jingling already in his pockets, so to speak. He took upon himself the cosmetic of mankind, of sin. Isaiah said, we did not desire him because of the tremendous sin and degradation of the world. The nail prints in his hands were still there. The wound in his side was still open. This makes the Lord so available. Praise God. What understanding. What things. I'm sure they related tremendous judgment hall of Pilate. 
I'm sure they related the miracles of the life of the Lord. But then Jesus began to explain and bring the things into prophetic harmony. And he started with Moses' writing, which is the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. And then two chapters in Psalms, Psalms 90 and Psalms 91, were also written by Moses. So he began to relate to them how he would fulfill the Scriptures and where he was in the Bible prophecies and the fulfillment of the Word. And the Word being spoken in its fulfillment and bringing current events under the auspices of biblical revelation brings fire to the bones. Because later on the men says, when they saw that it was Jesus, did not our hearts burn within us? Now we recognize what the burning is. Hallelujah. Now we recognize that he is very cautious to bring forth and to allow you and I to know this is the event where this portion of Scripture is to be fulfilled. That what you're going through now, this Scripture applies. That's the shepherd. To categorize the believer, to position us in the volume of the book. We are the volume of the book. We've cried out to him in the eternal ages and the eternal intellect of God. We've cried out. Psalms 40, verse 6 and 7. For it's written to me in the volume of the book. I come to do thy will, O God. That's the writing of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost is writing on your heart. Not my will, but thy will be done. Do the will of God. For mine ear hast thou opened. Be opened ear. Psalms 40, verse 6. The things. The things of God are being brought forth to the open ear. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Exodus 21 tells us the procedure of the open ear, what it involves. Verse 5 says, When the Hebrew slave is set free, at the year of Jubilee is implied. The master comes and says, You're set free. But the Hebrew slave says, I love my master. I love my wife. I love my children. I will not go out free. I won't do my own thing. But I'm going to keep my family under the care of the master. And I'm going to become not only a slave, but a love slave. And my master shall take care of us. Hallelujah. When God calls one, he calls a whole home. The anointing of the whole family. That's the master. That's the true meaning of Hebrew. The word Hebrew means to cross the river. Abraham was a Chaldean till he crossed the river in obedience to God. And he saw the city that God is building. Hallelujah. So he became Hebrew in the obedience of crossing the river. You and I are Hebrews because we've crossed the river of the word of life. We've come unto the promises, the land of his anointing, of his provision, of his presence. Wherever we go, it's holy ground. Huh? Amen. As the captain, the host of the Lord is with us. Amen. We just don't go, we'll go find out where he's at. He's where we are as the word flows forth from us. Hallelujah. We conquer the land and we conquer wherever we go because his anointing is upon us. So the Hebrew slave says, I love my master. I love my wife. I love my husband. I love my children. 
So then the master takes the earlobe and takes him down, takes the servant to where the temple is and or the tabernacle. Puts him up against the post, which is the opening up of the tabernacle. The old, at the door, his earlobe is placed, and then the all is sent through the ear. The hole is put in the ear so that the master and the servant are well recognized and honored. What this is saying is, from now on, I will hear my master's voice and obey him. Because the hole in the ear means I'm listening will be provided for. Hallelujah. Why Jesus said when he came into the world, sacrifice and offering. Thou didst not desire, mine ear hast thou opened. Amen? The Lord Jesus said, my ear hast thou opened. Praise God. The Father has bored his ear, has put a hole in his ear, and the hole is you and I. The irritation that is put in a pearl begins, or in, in the oyster, begins the pearl. A pearl always starts with an irritation. And then the oyster begins to coat the irritation, a piece of sand or particle. You and I are the irritation of Jesus. And he coats us with his precious blood. And now we're the pearl of great price. Hallelujah. We have come forth, the anointing of his covering, and therefore the pearl of great price is the body of the Lord. Hallelujah. And his precious blood is applied. And the coating of his righteousness brings us forth. In Bible college, we used to say, boy, I'd like to see those oysters that made the pearly gates. Hallelujah. This is why the Lord Jesus is, brings every area of his word in fulfillment. His office to categorize and put within your spirit, soul, and body every area of his word. So that the word being fulfilled magnifies and glorifies the Father. So he said, mine ear hast thou opened. And then Hebrews 10 verse 5 picks it up and quotes the same thing. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire, but a body thou hast prepared for me. In Psalm 40 verse 6 it says, thou hast opened mine ear, mine ear hast thou opened. But in Hebrews 10, 5, it says a body. So we're the open ear of the Lord. A body thou hast prepared. We're the body of the Lord. The tremendous authority, the fire of his word, burns within us. And our ear is open to hear. So he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. That's why Paul and Peter especially say, I'm Paul, the apostle, a servant. And when they use that word servant, it's doulos. The Greek word is D-O-U-L-O-S, which means I'm a love slave of Jesus. I will hear his voice, and my heart will not be hardened, but I will enter into his rest. As he speaks to my ear, then the ear takes charge of the spirit, and the soul, and the body. And I will enter in unto the rest of the Lord. This is why the ear is the embryo of the body. Have you seen a little babe before it's born, or diagram, or even pictures? The embryo in the mother's womb 
before birth. If you've ever seen that picture, then you know the ear is the shape of that embryo. Doctors tell us that they can take and push on pressure points in the ear. The same with the feet. And when you put pressure on the feet, it regulates different parts of the body. So it is with your ear. The pressure points on the ear influences the organs of the body. That's why the Word of God is a sharp two-edged sword that goes down to the very joints and marrow of your bone and gives you health in every area of your life. The marrow of the bone is where this blood cells come from that produces health and circulation in your body and your metabolism is balanced. That's why the Word of God, hallelujah, goes through the open ear. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Because the Lord says, as I control your ear, I control your whole spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. I'm going to apply the Word to your life. Hallelujah. Because we have a spiritual bloodstream and we have a spiritual bloodstream. And so the rhythm of the Word flows out in the anointing of His Word that's within us. When Paul the Apostle had the viper take a bite of his hand, sending the poison into his body, Paul shook it off into the fire because the rhythm of the Word was within him. Now, that's what the Lord is delivering and setting you free. Why? So that you may hear the rhythm of His Word. You're going to be led. You'll be at the right place at the right time. The pure trumpet anointing shall come upon you because the Word of the Lord within you shall allow you to walk in the cloud, not only see it when it moves, but you'll be walking in it. Hallelujah. And when the cloud of God moves, the rhythm, the heart beats, not only of your life, but His life is within you. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that rhythm of His Word, the themes that He relates to in your life, He takes charge. And when you don't have peace about a matter, it's because the rhythm of the Word is within you. Hallelujah. And he gives us peace. That's the key of David. And when he shuts, no man's going to open. And when he opens, no man's going to shut. Hallelujah. Because the rhythm of the Word is within you. Hallelujah. I'm the Lord thy God that healeth thee. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. He's able to do exceedingly above what I ask or think. The Word of the Lord just beats within you. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. You lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You speak with new tongues. That's the circulation of the Spirit within you. Hallelujah. That's why we know somebody's got the circulation of the Lord. Hallelujah. They will speak with the life of the Lord. The blood is the life of Jesus. And the blood speaks better things than that of Abel. You'll speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. Now, if you take up any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. And you shake that back in the fire. And the poisons of life cannot combat and come against you. Why? Because the Word's already within you. The wisdom of the Word. You don't know exactly what's biting you in many cases. 
But you do know by the authority of the Word, the Word comes against any poison, drives it out of your mentality, drives it out of your body, drives it out of your soul, any bitterness, any hurt. You're set free by the power of God, for the anointing of the Word is His life. You've learned how to yield to the Word. Praise God. And when the barbarous people saw that Paul did not die suddenly, Two heartbeats, he could have been gone. Should have been. Or swell up in Acts 28, verse 6. And the only place it's found in the Bible is what Dr. Luke wrote. He wrote a medical term. They said, the barbarous people said, because the viper had laid hold of Paul, that was vengeance. That was God's judgment. He's a wicked man. He's had it. So they watched. You know, the world likes to see you die away. I knew it. I knew they were just too big for their britches and this deliverance and the authority of the Word. And the world just loves to see someone stumble and fall, groan and moan. Pray for me that I'll hold out to the end. This looks like the end. The world just loves to see a spirit of religion come upon people to where they're so dominated with tradition and so bound. Oh, my. Of satanic forces. And the world hates to see is somebody shake the viper in the fire. Dr. Luke began to write it. He said, the barbarians' minds were changed. Dr. Luke was a man that had a background of a physician. He wrote a word there that in the Greek, it's only found in that place, just once in the Bible, Acts 28, verse 6, their minds were changed. And that word is meta balo. M-E-T-A dash B-A-L-L-O. Changed. Does not mean a change of opinion necessarily. Meta battle. Their minds had a metabolism. Praise God. When they saw the power of God in the life of an individual, and this is what's going to bring one of the greatest harvests the church has ever known, is God's going to have a glorious church. Amen? Sure, there's apostasy. Sure, there'll be fallings away. Somebody wants to fulfill that scripture? Have at it. But there's a group that's going to be fulfilling the glorious church. You shall be strong. You will do exploits. Well, brother, they've already got our pension checks all written up. 666. Visa cards and master charge and envelopment. And master charge, and in Belgium, oh, that big computer is already ready. The mark of the beast is at hand. The only thing I know what to do is just move next door to Mormons. <laughs> Surely nobody's ever seen. They're all stored up. Now, some people don't say that, but they feel like it. How are we going to provide for ourselves? Well, yesterday they delivered enough cheese to Los Angeles to take care of a few of us for a while. <laughs> Listen, friend, the devil is not a creator. He didn't take up the mark of the beast. Now, he turned it into a beast. But Jesus is the creator. Jesus is the one that marks you and I, according to Ephesians 1. Amen? You have the mark. That's the prize of the high calling. Amen? Because the progressiveness, the Bible even calls it predestination. It doesn't mean that God has some to be saved and some to be lost. No. 
It means there's a certain sequence of events that once one thing happens, you can depend on the faithfulness of God the Father to have the next thing and the next thing and the next thing until we all come together in the unity of the faith in the image of Jesus. Glory to God. That's our inheritance. That's why we're called the church of the firstborn. The blood of Jesus is shed not to bring you and I into fire insurance to miss hell. We're going to heaven. We're going to sneak out the back door. One day you won't see us then. then. No, friend, we're not. God is empowering us. The world will give account to the body. Amen. Hallelujah. And His authority upon us. So that anointing that He's prepared for us. That's why Ephesians 1 says, Once you hear the word, you will trust it. Then you'll believe it. And then you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Hallelujah. You're already sealed. Amen. You're sealed with the mark of the prize of the high calling. And all young. Abraham said, I'm not going to take from the king of Sodom the materialistic goods of this world. I'll raise my hand. That's the high arm covenant that you have. Praise your hand and praise God. The provision is met because you're seeing it. Praise and dependence. I will raise my hand unto the most high God, the Elohim of God. He of us shall then God comes to Abraham, the next chapter, Genesis 15, verse 1 to 3, and says, Abraham, I was thrilled when you stood up for me, and you said, uh, you'll not take. In other words, that's implied. You'll not take that. Even the shoelace from unbalanced desire. The king of Sodom means unbalanced desire. The king of Sodom has always tried to bring and accuse and dominate God's people. But you have raised your hand unto El Elyon. Because Abraham raised his hand unto the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. Earth, the materialistic provision of the earth. Heaven, the spiritual position of majesty. We will sit with him in heavenly places. One day after studying through a process of agonizing and longing for Jesus, I studied so long that I just said, Lord, I just love you. My Lord, I, I just become so simple. <laughs> in other words, I don't even know how to come in for, out from under the rain, you know. I, I said, oh, Jesus, I love you. And the Lord told me, he said, son, says, I love you too. He says, I love my people. He says, I want you to know something. He said, you, you, you want, want to know something? I said, yeah. So I said, keep it simple. <laughs> he said, son, I want you to know this. Tell my people whatever Lucifer wanted, you get. I said, what? He said, whatever Lucifer wanted, my people get. Lucifer wanted to ascend and be like the Most High. You and I, from glory to glory, he's changing us to be in his image. He wanted to have the throne. You and I are sitting with Christ in heavenly place. Whatever Lucifer wanted, my pride. The believer gets by a contrite and a humble spirit. Amen? I think we better worship. Lord, we worship. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. You haven't withheld any good thing from them that walk uprightly. We praise you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. 
Andara bas sikara varı yandalamış sanda. Hila vara bas sukuri yandalamış sanda. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. So when you and I will throw the vipers into the fire, the poison leaves us by the authority of the word, then everyone around us has a metabolism of the mind. Metabolism is, is that balance within the body that balances the minerals, the vitamins, the nutrients of the body to produce health. Every organ functions in its capacity. <clears throat> and that's what Jesus is doing at this hour. He's moving with every one of us so that we could all function and bring forth the allocation of what he's already allotted us to project the full potential of his calling within us. Hallelujah. And everywhere you go, you're going to be that catalyst of anointing so that men will have a metabolism of the mind and they'll see the rhythm and feel the anointing of God within you. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, I want to apply in every capacity of your life the Word so that you know that that's my office to reveal my Word to you in every area of your life. It's beautiful to see the authority of the Word in our life. In fact, it could be a, a very delightful some pleasure is the events of your life. You might think they're of none essential, but just allow the Spirit of God to apply a scripture to the happenings of your life. It's beautiful to see how the Lord fulfills His word. My devotions the other day, I ran across this verse that brings this out. John 19, verse 28. <clears throat> Jesus is on the cross. In verse 28 of chapter 19 of John, And after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the Scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Underline that the Scripture might be fulfilled. Jesus was on the cross. He was in complete command. He was watching the events. The military term here is he synchronized his heart to the Scriptures. It's exactly what he was doing. Synchronizing every area from Genesis 3.15 down through the Word of God. His life fulfilled and was the touchstone and on the cutting edge every revelation of the Father. He's the culmination of the heart of God. And yet he's in command of his own crucifixion. This is what it implies. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the Scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. The original intent here is that during or after these particular events, Jesus was placing every event in the Scripture. What it implies is that the Lord was going through the Word of God as He went into Genesis all the Scripture. Is there any other Scripture in Genesis that is to be fulfilled? Exodus, Numbers, or Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Every area of Scripture. Was there any more fulfillment? Are they deriding me? Yes. Is there two thieves? One on each side? Yes, there they are. Are they gambling over my garment? Yes. 
He was watching every event and applying the Scripture to every event so that as he went through the Word of God, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Samuel, Kings, Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, and as his mind went through the word of the Lord in complete command, then he got the Psalms 22 and verse 15. Put it down by John 19, 28. Psalms 22 and verse 15. And at that point, I don't know how he did it, but he did it with the authority of his heart. The Word of God had already been hid in his heart. And now he says, I thirst. Because he reads in Psalm 22, 15, My strength is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue cleaveth to my jaw. And therefore he saith, I thirst. I thirst. He proclaimed what the Scripture had already spoken. He would not say, it is finished, until every jot and tittle, every area of the Word was fulfilled in his life. And he'll not say it or allow you to say it's finished until the Word is revealed and fulfilled in us. Hallelujah. You'll be set free by the power of God. Your thirst shall be, hallelujah, quenched by the water of the Word. The anointing of the Lord shall bless your home, your life, your job, your business. Everything you touch shall prosper for the glory of God's upon you. And Jesus' life will go through the Word of the Lord in your spirit, and the Scripture shall be fulfilled before you can say it is finished. Hallelujah. We desire the word to be fulfilled, Father. Hallelujah. These are the things that he spoke. The anointing of his word, the power, the administration. Now the things that we've spoken unto you, the Spirit of the Lord saying, this is the summary. But we have such a high priest. The word of the Lord shall be fulfilled within you. This is the metabolism of the mind, the glory and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You're going to have a healthy mind because of the wisdom that God is releasing in our day. Hallelujah. That authority of his divine nature. Did not our hearts burn within us when he opened unto us the Scripture? The burning of the Word shall become more potent, and the glory of the Word shall become so strong in your life that that burning up within you, hallelujah, will reveal the Lord in all of His glory. You'll see things you've never seen before. You'll feel and know the authority of the Lord directing your life in greater capacities of glory. Up until this time, you possibly had the vision and then believed and, and sort of groaned and, and pursued until the provision. No more. We're going to have the provision that shall fulfill the vision. Before you call, God's going to answer. Hallelujah. The anointing of the provision shall be upon God's people. And when we go through the doors of His opportunities, and the key of David shall be upon us, we'll have the provision. And we'll see the glory of God. We'll see doors open and the magistrates and leaders. And as we pray tonight, those prayers shall back us up with the authority of the Word. And we'll speak to the leaders of this nation and every nation. Every child of God shall be called upon to go through doors of anointing. We didn't even realize God would give us the prestige anointing to go through. Hallelujah. This is why he's saying, I'm going to take my word. You're going to meditate in the law. 
And we go back to Psalms, and we'll begin to close this portion of the seminar. You go back into the Psalms 1, verse 2. After the man has not, he's been delivered from the seed of the scornful, from walking with the ungodly, being in the way of sinners. Verse 1, you relate that to Ephesians, walking, sitting, and standing. Walking, we walk worthy of the vocation to which we're called. We walk in love. Sitting, we sit with Christ in heavenly places. Psalms 1-1 is the negative, Ephesians is the positive. Standing, we put on the whole armor of God, and having stood, we still stand. Paul's a little humorous there. What that means in the Greek is, when you're going through a trial, keep the armor of the Word on you. Hallelujah. Helmet of salvation. Righteousness is the breastplate. Loins girt about with the truth. Hallelujah. Feet shod with the gospel. The authority of the shield of faith, the rema, the sword of the Spirit. And when you get through that trial, the Father says, deliver them from that and get them ready for the next one. It means keep your armor on and another one's coming. Having stood, still stand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, that kind of encouragement... <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it means victory unto victory. It means you shall know the reputation of the Lord, for he is the victor. Hallelujah. He is the captain of the host of the Lord. So then verse 2 of Psalms 1 says, Now this man who doesn't sit anymore and stand and walk with the negative, with the ungodly, the way of sinners, scornful, but his delight. The Lord wants to know what you delight in. What do you favor? Oh, it's all right. Have a catfish on your line now, man. Hallelujah. It's beautiful. Did you know that the Lord is more concerned about what we delight in than we realize? He said, I want the desire of your heart met. As we yield ourselves to him, he gives us the desires of our heart. Many times I've taken this by when my boy was younger, and still yet, but it first happened this one time I was very weary as I got off home from a tour, speaking, preaching. Everybody else under the power, I could barely make it home. And uh, there's a certain ministry that the home gives. Hallelujah. My wife, Mary Ann, knows how to minister. Amen. And so I was glad to be home. And I said, well, honey, I think I'll go down and take Galen down to the pier. Fish a little bit. Just have a nice day, he and I. So we jumped in there. Volkswagen bug, and I took him down to Huntington Beach Pier. While I was walking out there, I just thought, it wasn't really a prayer, I just said, well, Jesus, let Galen catch some fish today, and let's have a good time. And I just praise you for it. And that kid, one after another, just pulled him in. Those old pier fishermen looked over, what's that kid using for bait? <laughs> Jesus! A beautiful thing. Just, I just had a moment of tears just melting down my face. And I realized the Lord wants us to delight in Him, and He wants us to be delightful. Praise God. For His delight, He's mindful of those things you delight in, and as you serve Him, He's going to give you the delight of your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's why it's very important to know Him, to know His beauty, and then He wraps us up in His provision and His delight. But His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in His law does He meditate day and night. The word meditate, many of you know that 
This word in the Hebrew means to chew the cud. It is taken from agriculture, the cow, which has the cloven hoof. Now, the word cloven means two sections. The cloven hoof speaks of the clean animal, the cleanliness of the word. But here Jesus allowed the Holy Spirit to speak through David, and David, who knew sheep, also knew the revelation of the cow, being the clean animal. So when you study Psalms 1, verse 2, he delights in the law. He meditates. He chews the cud. Then you go over in Matthew 13, where the seed is the pure word. And you correlate these two examples, types, and shadows of the word. It becomes beautiful. For the seed of the word falls on the good ground. The seed of the word falls on the stony. The seed of the word falls in the weeds. And the seed of the word falls on the ground. The conditioning of the ground is the condition of our hearts. So this is the process. In other words, it's beautiful to see. And the Lord told me in my younger ministry, Son, if you want revelation, speak from both of my covenants, the Old Testament and the New Testament. If you will correlate both covenants, you'll never want for revelation. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what the Lord is doing He's revealing now the process of the Word. Now, the clean animal, the cloven hoof, the cow has three chambers, stomachs, some call them. The first chamber is the chamber of the memory. The Word goes into the first chamber. That is the most precarious moment of the believer. That when you have the Word in that first chamber, that is in your soulish nature. That's in your memory. And Jesus says, be very precarious. Be very concerned. A lot of people just have the Word in their first chamber. And the milk of the Word clabbers on in that first chamber. They become traditional and bitter. They can quote the Scripture, but the spirit of contriteness is not on them. Divisions are on every hand. Or others have the birds come away, and before they get out to the parking lot, they catch their thumb in the door, or the kids stumble over something, and there's something that happens to grab the Word out of you. When you have the Word go down into that first chamber, write it down, underline it, guard the Word, so the Word goes into the second chamber which is revelation. And the second chamber of the believer is revelation. And the third chamber is your changing now, and that's the image chamber of Jesus. Hallelujah. These are the chambers of revelation, of the application of the Word. It becomes part of you. In that first chamber, guard it, protect it, let it come back up into your spirit and be assimilated so that the Word becomes revelation and not argumentative or not some kind of a spiritual prize. But bless God, the authority of the Word's upon you. Hallelujah. That cloven hoof now is taken into Acts 2, 4, 
and the glory and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The rushing mighty wind comes upon them in the day of Pentecost, and the cloven tongues of fire sat upon each one of them. That's the authority of his word. The cloven, the word and the spirit, begins to fall upon him. Now, that anointing of revelation takes place. The Holy Ghost of God begins to reveal the Word to you. The Word becomes strength, assimilating power, and cleanliness, and setting you free. Hallelujah. That's the anointing of the Word. And then the Word goes into the third, the chamber of His image, goes into the creative area. You have the cloven hoof, you've got the cloven tongue, and now you have the cloven mind. Your brain is in two chambers. One is reasoning, and the other is creating. And that's where the devil is striking at with all of his diabolical force. is trying to get at our youth in the creative area of our brain. That's why it's hard to understand the music. The music is getting so supernaturally diabolical. But we come against the tactics of the enemy. Why? Because Satan knows Jesus has set up the cloven brain, the cloven mind. And as the Spirit of God takes, Jesus said, that which is mine and shows it unto you, you become created, and your cloven mind becomes clean, and the fire of the Word begins to burn within you, and the creative imaginings and challenges of the Spirit. Yes, our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of the imaginations of men. The reasonings of the world, hallelujah, are bound because we're hearing of the Spirit. And the Spirit of God is showing you what Jesus has received of the Father. Those things that are mine, the Spirit of the Lord shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Your creative mind begins to be alert when you begin to speak in the heavenly language. The Spirit of the Lord begins to reveal Himself in the creative mind, and then the glory of the Lord, the reasoning mind, begins to see. And the creative and the reasoning work hand in hand to fulfill the Word within you. Memory of the Word turns into revelation. Revelation turns into the glory, and the glory changes us into His image. We have such a high place. Amen? And He's watching over His Word to perform it. And His anointing and His glory shall set you free in every area of your life. Let's all speak in tongues. The cloven mind. Loose the cloven mind. Loose creativity. Loose the reasonings of Holy Ghost anointing. Loose the portions of divine deliverance. Loose my brother. Release my sister. Let the glory of the Lord come upon every child of God. In the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just allow that anointing of the Lord to settle upon you. Allow that peace. Allow that authority to rest. Andala basu kuri andala basanda. Ye sabara kibasuli alavaron. Amen. 
All right. Let's all minister together. I want to pray for that couple there, the sister that's uh, rubbing her uh, eye there. Would you stand and your husband there? I believe that's, yes, join hands together. For I'm bringing you unto myself in the anointing of my cocoon. That which you desired, the Lord cocooned you, yea, three years ago. And the ministry, yea, of my peace and my anointing has shot forth from you as great lightning bolts of my authority. Therefore, I bring you in to a fresh anointing at this hour. And do not fear, yea, the Lord is melting and molding. And I have my hand upon you, and my fingers shall bring it to pass. For, yea, the anointing of the potter is upon thee, and the wheel of thy God is turning you around and round. But I am bringing forth vessels unto honor. Therefore, yea, my son, rejoice, because I am giving you a fresh metabolism in your spirit, and in your mind thou shalt be strong. My daughter, realize the authority of that vision shall come to pass, for the anointing around your dwelling shall be blessed, and the prosperity of my peace shall be upon you. For yea, the glory of my word shall be revealed, and you'll not say it's finished until my anointing and my scriptures are fulfilled, and you'll go forth, uh, yea, saying, The Lord has filled us with his water, and the army is thirsty. Therefore I've raised you up for this hour, and thou shalt speak my word. And those around you and around your home, it shall be a beacon of authority and a heartbeat of joy, for you'll see it come to pass. Amen. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let that glory, let that authority come to pass. Amen. This is what the Lord is saying. The brother in the white shirt with the tie, would you and your wife stand? Yes, please. Yes, God bless you. I've been writing upon your heart, for yea, I am the author and the finisher. Therefore, I'm writing a new chapter. I've edited your life, my son, those things that the Lord thy God has edited. I've taken out, yea, that areas of trying to please men, positions of men. Therefore, my peace and my glory has made you an authority in the volume of the book. Do not fear, because your intercession is great. My daughter, you shall compliment your husband. For that authority of my peace is around you, and the image of the Lord shall be beautiful. So rise up, because the authority of Joshua is on you. Both of you, yea, are one heart, and the heart of Joshua is there, so that you'll take more land, and you'll set many free, because my authority is with you. And therefore, everything your hand finds to do will prosper. And my anointing, yea, as you've seen, and you've sacrificed to see many other things accomplished, I will bless you because I'm equipping you and you're going to hear a good report. So within two weeks' time, the anointing of that good report shall be upon you and your home shall be vindicated, for my peace is upon you and I will break the yoke, for my glory shall provide. And my son, the healing of my anointing is upon you and you're healed. And the anointing of the Lord has lifted that heaviness, and you'll see others set free. For you have agreed together, and therefore the peace of the Lord shall provide. The provision is already there, and the vision shall see it come to pass. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's all take our right hand as we will continue. There's many more sessions. And Mike can't wait to some of these sessions with our your fellow Brother Bell and others that will be ministering testimonies. And it just is a good group here tonight, Brother Glenn. My, this is a wonderful beginning. I want us to take our right hand and place it on our forehead. According to Ezekiel 9, they that prayed were sealed in their forehead. That means you're not under the wrath that's on the land. Amen? You're not under the Dow Jones average, friend. Some of you guys, you, you'd think it was the Bible the way you hit the stock market or other, other means. But allow the Holy Ghost to reveal to you what you're doing tonight. You're allowing the priestly anointing to seal your forehead 
and you will not be concerned with worry, because the Lord shall provide for thee from this day on. Amen? Repeat after me. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for sealing me in the forehead with the holy priesthood, with the royal priesthood, I, with the holy priesthood, shall praise your name, and with the royal priesthood, shall set others free. I've been sealed in my forehead by the Holy Ghost of promise. I will be strong in the Lord. I will not be under the curses that are in the world. I'm out from under every curse. I have victory. In the name of Jesus, I shall be provided for. Wisdom is mine. Love covers me. Jesus is in me. The Father is upon me. I am the habitation of God. And therefore, I will be raised up with His creative Word, with His resurrection life, I shall be an overcomer, the Word of the Lord, for this age. I speak with divine authority, and I love you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister, would you stand up and brother? Just join hands. For the vision that was sent, yea, those areas of the vision that I equipped you with. Cushai did run with the message. He was outrun by another more talented. But I say unto thee that the talent of the Lord is upon you. And you will finish the race, and you'll finish your course with joy. And much anointing is upon thee for that which I have healed and strengthened. I have lifted off of you, yea, that which would be a heaviness. And I will deliver and go before you with a ministry of authority. For you have the fire of my word. And those that you speak and teach... Yea, my daughter, you'll teach with a heavier anointing than you've ever known before. You'll compliment your husband, and my son, you'll compliment your wife, and the authority of my glory is upon you, that many shall know that I've gone before thee and given thee the formulas of life. And by my divine power, you have all things that pertain in the life and godliness, and you will prevail, and you'll see my glory upon you and your loved ones, so that you'll say, Yea, the Lord has ministered to us in an unusual manner. We'll see many brought unto his joy because the portals of authority are open to us. We will have favor with God and man, and you'll go forth, and many shall receive my joy. Amen. Praise Amen. God. So you've been touched and healed. Amen. Thank you so much. I see the clock uh, again has uh, kept going. And uh, so we, we, of course, will uh, watch the clock, but we really love to see the anointing. I believe every service from this hour is going to gather in momentum and glory. Thank you so much. Let the dream come in this place. Father, I thank you for the glory of your presence amongst us. I praise you for the angel of the Lord that ministers to your people. And Father, I thank you for rest for us tonight, and to raise tomorrow, to praise and to magnify and to glorify. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.